Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson three of the platform specific series of my HA86 assembly tutorials. We've been looking at bitmap graphics on CGA, EGA, and now it's time for VGA. We're going to be using the 320 by 200 256 color system, and we're going to be putting our graphic onto the screen. Now, the graphic we're showing is just going to be 16 color, but the theory still stands. It's the 256 color mode we're going to be using, so if you want to use more colors, you can. Anyway, let's go over to the code and let's see it in action. So we're going to be using this multi-platform example, which we've used in all the other examples as well. Um, it's got different modules for the different color systems. And here is our character in 256 colors and finally represented correctly. Now, the original sprite you can see just here. Uh, I exported this with Aka Sprite Editor, my free and open source sprite editor, which I use in all of my tutorials. You just go to x86 here, MS-DOS and save all bitmap VGA. And that will save in the correct format for today's example. Now, as with all of the other tutorials I've been doing, we're going to be discussing a screen initialization routine, which will turn on the graphics mode we're using, a get screen position command, which will calculate the memory address that we need to write to to get data onto our screen from an XY position. BH is X and BL is Y in this case, and that will calculate a destination into ESDI, and that will be where we need to write our data. And then we're going to have a get next line function, which will move a position down the screen so that we can calculate the start of each line for drawing the next line of our graphic here. So that's how we're going to be getting our image onto the screen. All we need to do, it's very straightforward to VGA. We just need to write the bytes. We've got no um, bit planes, unlike EGA. So honestly, VGA is going to be the easiest, ironically, if you're starting out. CGA and EGA are actually more tricky, even though VGA is the best. So um, that's weird. But um, personally, I, I think the older systems with the more quirky graphics do have a certain charm to them if you're looking to do retro programming, but whatever you enjoy. So we're including our file here. We're also defining a palette. Now I use a common format for my palettes in my tutorials, one nibble per channel, green, red and blue, unused top nibble. And we're transferring those here. We're loading in from the source palette that you just saw. And we're transferring each byte to a set palette function. And we'll be seeing that as well. OK, so let's have a look at today's code that's actually doing the work of this screen. We're using mode hexadecimal 13 here, which is VGA 320 by 200 at 256 colors. We're turning it on with the bias call 0 and interrupt hexadecimal 10. That turns on our screen. That's all we need to do to turn our screen on. Very straightforward. Now, when it comes to selecting a memory address of a XY position we want to write to, it's a very straightforward format that we're using here. Now, each byte is a single pixel. So when we want to calculate the position, the bytes are all in one giant bank of area. It's not like EGA where we need to do any kind of page flipping for the different bit planes. So all we need to do is take our Y position, multiply it by 320, we're doing that just here, and then add our X position, and that will calculate the offset within the screen bank for the byte we want to change. Now, the screen base is A000, so we're loading that into ES, the extended segment register there. And that will calculate the memory address of the XY position specified in BHBL, which is what we did at the start of this example here. OK, so that's how we can calculate the memory position for drawing graphics to the screen. What about when we want to move down a line of the screen? Well, of course, all we need to do is add 320. The lines are actually consecutive in memory. And as I said before, there's no page blanking. So very, very straightforward there. So that's all you need to do to move down a line. Now, when it comes to setting the palette, as you saw, we're using that uh, common format, which is common to all of our systems and all of the tutorials, all the way back to the Z80. So uh, we're using that common format and we're converting it. Now, we're using interrupt call hexadecimal 10 here, and we're using subfunction 1010 here. And that selects one of the color entries and changes it accordingly. Now, for this, we need to load the red component into DH, the green component into CH, and the blue component into CL here. The color itself is in BL. And so this will select the RGB entry of one of the colors. Now, the important thing to notice is that the color definitions use six bits per color channel, but my definition just uses four. So this is one of the few cases where I don't have enough colors. That's not too much of a problem. We're still getting a lot of color definition here, and it is common to a lot of other systems. So all we're doing is we're shifting the four bits that we do have into the correct position with bit shift commands left and right here and moving them into the correct registers and then calling that function just here to actually affect the change of the color. That's really all there is to it. VGA, as I say, very straightforward, and it does allow us to get nice 256 colors onto the screen. 
So anyway, there we go. So that's a nice simple example there for you if you want to get started with VGA. Um, as I say, always you can download all of the example code from my tutorials and the build scripts and things that you've seen today. So if you want to have a go with VGA, you know, please um, use this as some kind of starting template. Anyway, if you've liked this video, please like and subscribe. But YouTube ranks videos by how many likes they get, so it would help me out if you do. Uh, whatever you do, though, I hope you enjoy your programming. I wish you all the success possible with your programming and creative projects. Thanks for watching today, and goodbye.